Hello everyone. Today, as promised, I'm going to be talking about full screen deactivation. I actually did a, a earlier take of this and didn't really like how it turned out. Uh, I didn't feel like I explained it well enough, so now I'm recording this again. Um, so to begin with, this is the uh, function here that handles deactivation. Uh, and what I mean by that is what happens when the window loses focus, particularly when we are in full screen. So um, to begin with, right, I'm actually going to show what the default behavior is so that I can show the problem. So I'm going to comment out um, the whole body of this function for now, uh, just so I can show, right, um, what would normally happen if I didn't do anything. So we'll start with that. So I actually have Flashpoint open now, and I've loaded up a game uh, just so that I can actually, you know, show this over an actual web page. So if I enter full screen now, and let's say that I start Task Manager, you can see that the full screen backdrop is still there, and we've just opened another window over it. Um, similarly, if we open a new like pop up uh we have a similar thing where the full screen window is still there it's just we have another window over top of this and this is not bad exactly like it's fine it's not a bug i just felt it was kind of weird so i actually did a bit of testing i went through some of the games in my steam library and uh wanted to see you know what would happen if I opened another window over top of them when they were in full screen. How would they respond? And I tried a variety of games, and I was actually surprised uh, how differently different games handled this particular scenario. Some games, um, they did this, j just this default behavior, pretty much, where I could just open another window over them. Other games, they would uh, duck out of the way. And yet, other games would try and get focus back, so if you opened a window over them, they would just take back focus as if the other window never opened over them. Um, ultimately, I decided that my the most intuitive behavior, I thought, was if the window ducked out of the way. So, I'm now going to uncom my code here, and it's quite a bit of code, like it's quite long. You might think, what is all this complexity for? Uh, I will explain why this is so complex in a moment. Um, but first, let's just uh, demo this with the changes. So now, if I enter full screen and I open Task Manager, you can see it ducks out of the way. So my window is still there, right? It's just that when I open new windows, it uh, ducks out of the way for the new window, so the full screen backdrop is not behind it. Uh, similarly, if I open a pop-up window, now it exits full screen, uh, so that you can see the relationship between the two windows, right? So now it's clear, oh yeah, uh, the, the old window is still there, but we just uh, opened a new window over top of it, right? Um, the one scenario where we do not exit full screen is dialogues. So, for example, the print dialog, I demoed this in a previous video, this will not exit full screen, there's a good reason for that. Or the save as dialog, that also does not exit it, right? And so, dialogues do not cause full screen to exit. So we're going to be talking today about the logic behind this and why this is. Um, so let's now take a look at this function to see why this is implemented this way. So the first thing that we do is we remove a message filter. This is unrelated to full screen deactivation. It's just another thing uh, that we have to do. Um, and then we check if we're in full screen, because if we're not, then we don't really care about uh, deactivation. We can just use the default behavior. Um, we only care about, you know, kind of the weirdness of having multiple windows over our full screen window. Uh, and then after that, we have all of this weird looking logic, but down here is the part where we duck out of the way. Uh, so why don't we just comment all of this out for now, 
and see what happens if we just use the most naive possible implementation. What if we just, you know, we're deactivating and we're in full screen, so let's just duck out of the way if there's a new window, right? Let's take a look and see what that would look like. So you can see, if I enter full screen and I open, like, Task Manager, it still works, right? Or, you know, any other window, if I open the Run dialog, right? That still works. Um, so it's still ducking out of the way. The problem begins when we open the dialog from the browser itself. So let's open, say, the print dialog. So now the window has, has ducked out of the way, uh, and that's, you know, that's exactly what we told it to do. We told it, you know, if there's a new window to, to duck out of the way. But uh, what if we try and bring our old window back? Well, we can, um, but now if we try and click on anything in the print dialog, they both disappear. And if I now bring this back and I try and change the page range, let's say I want to only print a certain number of pages. Oh, well, I clicked on it and it disappeared again. Um, let's say I want to open the preferences. Oh, well, I clicked on that button. Now there's this new window, but it, it's disappeared again. And so every time that I click on something in here, they they both disappear together. And this is not very nice. This this comes off as a bug, right? So so that's just not not good. So, so why does that happen, right? What's happening is I'm minimizing the window to duck it out of the way. Why is it that uh, whenever I do that, the print dialog also disappears? Well, it's because it is an owned window. So there is a feature of Windows where one window can own another. So in this case, the print dialog is actually owned by our browser window, meaning that if you minimize one, then the other will minimize. They're tied together, right? And so you activate one and the other activates. You deactivate one and the other deactivates. And so if I try and just minimize the browser window, it'll also minimize the print dialog. And so they're always minimized together. And that's why we get stuck in this loop where the main browser window gets deactivated because we're activating the print dialog. So then I try and minimize the main browser window, but that also minimizes the print dialog. And so I bring it back, and then I click something in the print dialog. The main window gets deactivated, and so it minimizes, and then the print dialog also minimizes. And so it kind of soft locks it, right? And so that's bad, obviously, and so we need some kind of check to ensure that that doesn't happen. <coughs> And so that's where all of this logic comes in. So the first thing that we do is we get the foreground window. Uh, now, the foreground window is the window that is in front, uh, and it doesn't care about which process that's from. So if we open like a new task manager window, uh, then the foreground window will be task manager. But a quirk of this is that when you get the foreground window um, and the newly activated window is in the same process, then it is synchronous. But if you get the foreground window and the newly activated window is in a different process, then it is asynchronous. So what I mean by that is, if let's say that we open a, a browser pop-up, right? Then that pop-up is going to be in the same process, right? Because it's still part of the browser. And so what happens is the deactivate event happens first, right? And so our window deactivates, and then the activate event happens on the other window. And so it's synchronous, right? Our window deactivates, and then the other window activates. So at the point in time when this function is running, the foreground window is still the browser window if it's if it's in the same process, right? If it's in the same process, then the foreground window is still going to be our, our main browser window because the other window has not activated yet. It need, it'll only activate after this window has deactivated. But if we open a window in a different process, like if we open, 
a task manager or something, uh, then that window activates at the same time that this deactivate event uh, goes off. And so that other window has already become the foreground window. It's asynchronous, right? And so we can detect whether or not the newly activated window is from our process or not by simply getting the foreground window and then checking, is it our browser window, right? Because if it is, then we know that it's synchronous, so it's from our process. Now, why do we even care? that it is from our process or not, well, it's purely aesthetic, right? Um, <coughs> strictly speaking, there's there's not very many limitations on what one window, uh, what a window from one process can do uh, with a window from a different process. Like, they can interact the same uh, as if they were from the same process. Um, and so... The only reason that we care whether it's from our process or not is because, again, I specified that when we're in full screen and a pop-up window is opened, that we want to exit full screen, right? And the way that we can know that it's a, a window belonging to our own browser if, is if it's from our process, right? Whereas if it's from a different process, then we want to duck out of the way. That difference is purely aesthetic, right? We could decide, I just want to always exit full screen when there's a new uh, window, regardless of if it's from the browser or not. But I decided, um, you know, it's kind of, it's a little bit nicer if it's a pop-up window to just exit full screen so that you're not lost as to where your previous window went. Um, but it makes more sense if it's a different process altogether to just duck out of the way completely. Uh, and so that's just an aesthetic difference based on what I decided made sense. And so the first thing that we do is we check, is the window from our own process? Because if it is, then we're going to handle it like it's a pop-up window. <coughs> so now we get to checking if the new window is a dialog, right? So the first thing that we check is whether we can focus our main window. Uh, and so this ties into, right, if I open the print dialog again, I can't click on the main window. I can't focus the main window anymore. So that's what the can focus um, thing tells us here, right? This is going to reflect whether we can focus our main window. That's clue number one, right? That's clue number one that there is a dialog over top of our window. The next thing that we need to check is that there is a window above us in the Z order. So when one window owns another window, um, there is a guarantee that that window that is owned will be directly above us in the Z order. Uh, and so what we want to do is check if we own a window. And so we need to get the window above us in the Z order. We might actually own multiple windows, but we don't really care about that. We just care if we own any window. So we get the window above us in the Z order, and then we check if that window above us in the Z order, uh, if we are the owner of it. And if we are the owner of the window above us in the Z order, then we know that we own a window and that that window is preventing focus to our main window. And so we know that there is a dialog there. And so we just don't do anything. So we don't duck out of the way or do anything special because we, because that way we prevent the bug that we encountered before where they both ducked out of the way at the same time. Otherwise, we just exit full screen in this case because it's from the same process. So it's like a pop-up, right? And so in this case, we just exit full screen. We could decide to duck out of the way, right? I just it purely, for aesthetic reasons, I thought it was better if it's a pop-up window to just exit full screen so that the relationship between the two windows is clear. <coughs> Next, we handle the case where another process opened a window. And it's a similar story here. Now, you might be wondering, why why are we bothering to check for an owned window in this case, right? Here we're using the, the foreground window, and we're checking if, the, if we own the foreground window. We don't need to do this whole sort of 
get the um, window above us in the Z order little game because um, the foreground window, remember, in this instance is the newly activated window. It's not us, right? It's going to be the newly activated window. So now we're checking if the newly active window from the other process, if we own that. Why are we bothering with that? Well, the reason for that is because there's also another type of window that should not cause an exit from full screen. If I actually go and start the plugin in this game, which is Viscape, you will see, <clears throat> as soon as it loads, that it also opens the dialog. This dialog should not exit full screen either, but it's not actually created by our process. It is uh, launched from Viscape, and Viscape actually, the Viscape plugin runs in its own process. Um, and so <clears throat> we need to make sure that even if the, we own a window from another process, this should not cause an exit from full screen either, or, or it shouldn't cause us to duck out of the way either, right? It should just do nothing and stay in full screen, just like the other dialog. So it doesn't matter if the dialog window is coming from another process or not, so we need to check for it in both cases. So, <coughs> so that's why here we again check if we own the window, even if it's from another process, because like I said before, there's there's nothing preventing another process from creating an owned window that belongs to our current one. So we check if we own it, um, and then we also check if we can focus, right? If we can focus, then the new window is not a dialog, but it still has um, a relationship with us because it's still owned by us. And so in that case, we treat it, we exit full screen, um, just as before, because that window is owned by the browser window, and so I still count that as having a relationship with the browser window. And so I decided in that scenario to exit full screen instead. But otherwise, again, we just do nothing because there is a, a dialogue. Uh, and so it shouldn't cause an exit from full screen. And then finally, after all of that, uh, you know, if we clear all of those conditions, then we duck out of the way, uh, which is sort of the, the main thing if a new window opens over us. So, <clears throat> so that is the logic behind window deactivation.